Hello and welcome to season two, another interview brought to you by the Teachers of BC podcast. Uh, Today, I would like to recognize that we are coming uh, to you from the ancestral and unceded territory of the Hunkaminam and Squamish speaking people. And uh, we appreciate the opportunity to hold our interview on these traditional lands. So thank you for that. Today, we are with uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, Shannon Spence, and I think we should just jump right into it. So, thank you so much for interviewing with me, Shannon. Uh, You're welcome. Let's start with uh, uh, how long you have been teaching and maybe what uh, grade levels and subjects that you teach. So, I have been teaching for 24, 25 years, sorry. Uh, predominantly grades 6, 7, 7. A little bit of three, four, five mixed in there. Um, and, and right now you're teaching. I teach everything except for music. Thank goodness for that. Because, <laughs> yes, I do have one funny story about having to teach band one day because the band teacher did not receive a TTOC. How'd that go for you? Um, <laughs> well, according to what some of my students went home and told their teachers, it was or met their parents, it was the best band day ever. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, let's just say I am not a music or band yeah. teacher or have any specialty in that um, teaching ability mm-hmm. area. Yeah. Yes, no. That's uh, a demanding job, I tell you. But what you do is very demanding as well. That six, seven age group is uh, is quite the challenge, as I've learned this year, because this is my first year teaching that age group, and I'm I'm finding it pretty challenging. So, you know, it it definitely yes. Um, I find you know there's days I ask myself, especially come after March time, you know after spring break. I ask myself often, why do I teach this grade? (laughs) It's coming. (laughs) Am I crazy? (laughs) Um, Because the hormones rage a little heavier and, um, you know, spring fever hits and they're antsy to get out and away from, uh, I'm in an elementary school that has K to seven, so it's not a middle school setting and they are moving on to high school. The grade sevens are moving on to high school next year, so... Sometimes they can test those boundaries a little bit greater uh, mm-hmm. in the springtime. So you definitely, uh, I have to amp up my uh, management techniques, my management techniques <laughs> and uh, yeah, just make sure that there's a lot more structure in place and help them to understand how the real world functions. Yeah, I think a lot of them find that jumping into grade eight sometimes is a really big it's not so much of a jump a, as it it's is. It's a bit of a leap. It's a bit of a leap. <laughs> bit of a leap, it's yes, different. I would say. It's very different. They need to get yeah. the leotards on and yes. leap into it. Limber up. <laughs> Some more than others. Definitely. <laughs> um, what made you decide to go into teaching? Do you have... Uh, oh, gosh. I mean, yeah. I had the most amazing grade five teacher who was a huge inspiration, I think, of why I wanted to become a, a teacher. Her name was Ms. Horn. And I actually um, bumped into her in a restaurant um, probably about 10 years into my teaching career. So she had long retired. And I actually was able to tell her that she was the inspiration behind my becoming a teacher. Oh, that's awesome. So what um, did she say when you said that? Oh, she was honored. Um, she Did she remember she, you? She remembered me. Aww. Well, I had quite the unique um, maiden name, so <laughs> people often don't forget that. Um, or forget me, I suppose. I can be a bit of a unforgettable person for <laughs> not always good reasons, I guess. Um, so, yeah, she was honoured, and uh, it was a wonderful time for me to be able to express that. But I became a teacher because I simply love being with children. I love children and I love working with children. I love reading with children. Um, I just love being with children, period. Mm -hmm. I love watching their little minds um, or big minds. (laughs) I love watching them learn. I love the excitement, the, uh, I don't know, just the untouched 
mind to mm-hmm. mold, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I find that's just, it's so much fun to go every day and be able to reward myself by working with the kids, helping them, watching them smile, especially when they grasp a concept that you've been working on or you see the aha light bulb moment to go on. Mm-hmm. It just that's like fuel, isn't it? Watching that moment where like their cogs are turning, yes, and they're actually realizing a new piece of information. That's it's it is very much like fuel to the fire. It is, yeah, it's and very especially cool. when they say, "Oh my gosh, I get it now," mm-hmm. and then you're like, "Oh," sometimes you're like, "Finally," <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes you're like, "It's only been a week," yay, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But no, it's like just I just love working with kids. Period. I mean, it's. I tell my students every day, I have the best job ever. Mm -hmm. And even if we've had a rotten day, you know, the next day I might say, that was a really bad day yesterday. Let's not repeat that again. Yeah. And, And that's what's so awesome about my profession or our profession is because our each day is a different day. Totally. And it's a new opportunity. And yeah, like you can learn from it. Everybody can learn. Everybody can move forward. And every day is just a unique opportunity. Totally. And I just, I seriously love my job. Yeah. It's a pretty great job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you talked about your uh, formative experiences with your grade five teacher, but do you want to tell our listeners a little bit about your schooling, about your background and sort uh, of how, I, you, how you came to be where you are now? I always knew Um, in fact, since I was grade four, apparently I used to tell my parents that I wanted to be a teacher. Um, did you play teacher? Oh yes. Yeah. So did I. In, uh, my my parents had the availability to get extra desks from my elementary school and they set them up for me in the basement and I used to strong arm (laughs) my younger brother and my younger cousins and they would, I would make them play school. And I was always the teacher. They were never allowed to be the teacher. <laughs> and my parents even put a little chalkboard up on the wall for me. And I literally, <laughs> we would conduct schooling and they didn't like it, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I think your students but, I, but they, uh, your students would beg to differ. Uh, they quite like you teaching them. But oh I can imagine goodness. how that would be a little bit of a challenge, being <laughs> strong-armed by your <laughs> controlling older sister. Did you make them call you? Miss Shannon? I don't know what I did. I don't remember that part of it. I just remember making them sit there and learn. And I would walk around, (laughs) sit up. Because back in elementary school, we had to sit with proper posture all the time. And our teachers would poke the backs of our, in the back of our uh, rib cage if we weren't sitting up proper. Times have changed. So um, (laughs) I used to just mimic. Yeah. uh, um, Mimic what they would do. Mimic, I mean, uh, what they would do. Yeah. So... Anyway, I've just, I've always known I wanted to be a teacher and I had the opportunity to go to the University of Victoria and I absolutely loved that and lived on campus and met my husband. So nice. all was amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to share about your life now? Do you have a family? I ask this as if I don't yeah. know the answers, <laughs> but... Tell us about your family, Shannon. I have a beautiful, amazing daughter who is 20 years old. And she is going to SFU, actually, to become a counselor. Mm -hmm. So she's hoping to work in the high schools as a counselor and maybe do some counseling on the side as well. And then um, I have a fabulous, intelligent young son, not young I guess, he is actually graduating this year and he is hoping to go to BCIT into the HVAC, um, to become an HVAC technician. Very so, nice. Yeah, so, um, and then I have my most amazing husband of... Uh, 23 years married, 25 together. I mean, he's all right. And yeah, Yeah, he's all right. He'll do. (laughs) So, and he is a lawyer and works mostly from home over the past eight years. So, um, yeah, 
So we lovely family. We yeah. We yeah. and then my dad, my eighty four year old father, mm -hmm. who just got his COVID shot <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> um, he lives with us as well. So lovely. yeah. It's multi generational living. It, it is. As as so one busy, does these busy, days. Busy household, not busy as busy household. as it used to be, of course, when I started out. <laughs> so we like to ask, uh, especially during these strange times with COVID, uh, in what ways do you believe your classroom has struggled during this pandemic? Wow. <laughs> There's quite a few. Um, I would say the largest um, challenge, the biggest challenge has been the loss of instructional time. Mm -hmm. Um, the loss of learning time. So because of the staggered starts and staggered ends and the, um, staggered recesses and staggered lunches. Do you want to explain that? Because I don't think every school or school district oh, does that. Oh, maybe not. Okay. So, um, I have each, every classroom in our school has a group A and a group B and group A starts at 830 and group B comes at 8.45. Yeah. So, and then group A leaves at 2.06 and group B leaves at 2.16. Um, that is to try and have the less um, like bottlenecking people at entrances around and... each other. Yeah. Since we're all broken into cohorts as well, um, it's to try and avoid having too many people, um, too many parents around to pick up or drop off and too many kids around each other. Um, at the same time, but mostly I think the adults, you know, all uh, encompassing on one, at one place at one time. Mm -hmm. So that's a challenge. Um, For so many reasons. In itself, yeah, like huge reasons. Scheduling, um, scheduling this year was a nightmare. Yes, Because of this, all of the staggered starts and ends and breaks. Yeah. And that was very Yeah, challenging. you and I work on the prep schedule together. Mm -hmm. and, and for something that normally takes us how long? A day or two? Not even? Not even, really. It it took us over a week and uh, included several n nervous Adaptations, breakdowns. changes, yeah. <laughs> breakdowns. Gosh. This is impossible. This is impossible. But I know. Yeah, I can, I can see how that would really equate to a lot of lost teaching time I, I see it in my own schedule um well so. well you would know because one of my preps is covered well my all my preps are covered by you mm -hmm. um for music and one of my preps is first thing in the morning so basically I Ten just leave my door propped open not yeah. even more than that like yeah. you lose about 20 minutes definitely of a 40 minute no, mine's only half an hour that half an morning. hour first morning. So basically, yeah. my kids like, what do you do in ten minutes to teach music? You can't catch up. So really, it's <laughs> connect to the kids. It's, yeah, it's yeah. basically just a it's connecting very, very piece for you, definitely. And and it's it just makes it extremely challenging for everybody. The kids are unfocused. Is a hard for them. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's hard for you. How how could you teach in ten minutes a, a class? You can't. So basically, you guys are just talking and chilling out and getting to know each other and what's going on, what's mm -hmm. the latest gossip. Mm -hmm. Take attendance for yeah. me and, yeah. you know, and then they come back to class. But mm -hmm. it's, there's just a lot of challenges around that. And, and like you, we already mentioned scheduling for prep times, prep schedule, uh, hand washing. <laughs> we lose about an hour and a half a day with hand washing. Mm -hmm. um, not that I, I mean, I don't want to stop that. It is part of our safety protocols and... Luckily, knock on wood, our school, we are very fortunate, have not had any cases of COVID yeah. in our school. Um, a lot of times, I think along with the um, loss of instruction and learning, the kids really, um, I don't think they're as engaged uh, in learning. Or focused. Or focused mm -hmm. on learning as they used to be or mm -hmm. could be mm -hmm. if it weren't for COVID. Um, some of my students choose to wear masks in the school um, to protect, you know, their own families and uh, or or just deal with their own anxieties around uh, COVID and um, what could happen. That could be. That's probably a pretty big one too. Their anxiety levels. Oh, oh, a right? huge. I, is I'm another, noticing at least. Yeah, anxiety levels among the students uh, within staff as well, but I think. As adults, we can learn to use our strategies and deal with